Dracula is the legendary immortal lord of the vampire who ruled his undead nation from his stronghold in Chernobyl. Brielle Brooks is the daughter of Blade, the half-human, half-vampire monster hunter. Brielle, a.k.a. Bloodline, inherited her father's superhuman strength, reflexes, and senses, and has been trained by him to defend herself and others against creatures of the night. This is a tie-in with Blood Hunt, a group of vampires led by Blade, use dark force energy Energy, blot out the sun, unleashing vampires upon the world. Dracula began preparations for a mysterious, mystic ritual to quell the rebel vampires. As part of his plan, Dracula sought out Brielle Brooks, warning her that the world will come to an end unless they work together. Brielle was reluctant to ally herself with her father's ancient enemy, but was whisked away by Dracula to New York City, where they met with other heroes to strategize. The events of this issue take place after Blood Hunt, issue number three. Dracula, Blood Hunt, volume one, issue two. Blade's daughter, Brielle, has learned her father was behind all the chaos of the sun death. As the new lord of the vampire, she realizes that she would need to be the one to take him down. This prompts Brielle to run like hell. Yes, they were all heroes, but she didn't know any of them, except for Miles Morales' Spider-Man, who is a vampire turned to kill her initially. She knows that her dad has been a hero, and well, he's her dad, so that wasn't easy news to cope with or to believe. Brielle thinks to herself, it still takes a hot minute for my legs to remember that no sun in the sky means I'm not out of breath. I still want to collapse, but they're wrong or lying about my dad. However, I'm not about to drop on a strange street corner. She barely has a moment to process the recent events when she runs into more vampires. Through her tears over her father, she cuts through them. She starts by cutting one of them in half and then decapitates another and takes down the rest. Suddenly, vampires attack her from behind, biting and scratching her. Just then, somebody else swiftly takes out those two vampires. The help she gets in this fight is from the man without fear, Daredevil. Daredevil says, going after a kid, huh? Hope you didn't mind me chaperoning this dance as he jumps down to assist Brielle. Suddenly, Daredevil takes down six vampires with kicks, punches, and throws. Using his senses, Brielle says, seeing heroes fight in person versus on TV means you see all the nuances that make them each special. Watch Watching him move is like a bullet, so unlike Spider-Man or my dad. After Daredevil takes down the vampires, Brielle becomes protective, feeling let down by the adults around her. She tells Daredevil, don't make me fight you. I don't need another hero telling me I need to murder my dad. Daredevil is confused, not knowing who her dad is or who she is. Brielle knows Daredevil from TV, suddenly has an erratic heartbeat. She reaches for her serum pills, but can't take them in time. Before collapsing to the floor, she reveals. My dad is the new Lord of the Vampires, Blade. Daredevil was expecting Brielle to be out longer, but he had helped her get the serum pills before she fully passed out. Brielle says, good, they help when I lose too much blood or smell too much blood. It helps me keep control. Daredevil starts to ask questions. I assume that and your rabid healing has to do with your Blade being your father. Did Blade tell you that before or after telling you he was the Lord of the Vampires? Brielle responds, I call him Pops and he hates it. He didn't tell me that. Your friends did. Doctor Strange and Dracula and others. Daredevil interjects. I consider Doctor Strange a friend, but not Dracula. Brielle questions if Daredevil really doesn't know anything. Daredevil says, I know that the sun's been blocked from the sky. I know the smell of dark magic. I know my city is filled with hordes of vampires. Explain the rest to me. Brielle says, it turns out that between the sun vanishing, Dracula teleporting me from Atlanta to New York City, being attacked by my friend Spider-Man, and being told to go after my dad, I need someone to say I wasn't the weird one for stating the obvious. That something in the milk ain't clean. I just got my dad in my life. You know what the first thing I ever saw him do was? Save my life. He trained me to fight, but I'm supposed to believe he did all that just to hunt me down? Maybe he's got some kind of different plan or some shapeshifter is playing games, but instead of even investigating, you know what they do? They go, oh hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but you should just trust us and just end your father. I don't even know any any of you at all but Spider-Man and he tried to kill me what am I supposed to do. Daredevil says no one should have to make this choice so early into being a superhero. I'm sorry because I know what you're experiencing from more than one perspective. You're being asked to be a hero. Really? I get it. What do you think being a hero is? You become someone who can do great things, powerful things. Maybe you start by defending people against bullies, bigger and bigger bullies. 
you fight villains. And some people think that's where being a hero ends, but it's not. It's the easy part because at some point you are face to face with a villain you care about. Maybe it's a shapeshifter or they can't control themselves, but you know what they're doing is evil. Daredevil continues. Worse yet, maybe they really switch sides and the only way to stop them is for you to step up because you love them. If you don't stop them, you decided you're okay. The ones you love being villains, you decided not to save the version of them that would would hate who they've become. There's nothing I can say to make the choice easier, but I don't want to force you into making either choice. All I know is that running never saves a day. If it helps, I know what's it like on the other side too. I'm grateful my loved one stopped me. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the greatest acts of love you can offer. Just then, someone else appears. It's not the same dark magic that blocked out the sky, but it's them. Vampiric. Riel thinks to herself, I know exactly who who it was before he finished. One of the last people I wanted to see. Dracula appears flying up in the air. He says, are you finished wallowing, girl? We have crucial work to do. Dracula continues, how easy it was to track you and Daredevil down. Keeping Brielle on a rooftop where vampires can easily sense her was foolish. He then demeans Daredevil saying, I will assume your foolishness was due to lack of information. Now that you have that information, step aside side. Daredevil responds, she doesn't want to go with you. Dracula retorts, the existence of your species, as you know, cares not what she wants. Daredevil says, if she needs to go to Dr. Strange, it won't be with you. Dracula replies, you speak as if you could stop me. The fight begins. Daredevil jumps high into the air, using his senses and lands the first blow with a knee to Dracula's chin. He then follows over with a punch to the face, but then Dracula dodges a spinning kick and elbows Daredevil in the face. Playtime is over as Dracula catches Daredevil's leg and throws him into the wall. Dracula says, she has a job to do and your heroics are wasting time. Brielle says, stop this. If you want me to leave this rooftop, you'll back off. There are hordes of vampires to deal with. Then showing her heroism, Brielle tells Daredevil, you can't save people if Dracula throws you off a roof. You don't need to save me from Dracula. You already done so much, Daredevil. Thank you. She turns to Daredevil and says, I'll go back to the sanctum. Daredevil has shown compassion and understanding to Brielle, where all the other heroes were giving ultimatums. Daredevil explained both sides and gave her the choice. While Dracula and Brielle head back to the sanctum, she wants to stop for a moment, check in with her mom. She still needs to make sure her mom knows she's in New York. Brielle steps aside to make a call and once again has to leave a voicemail. She tells her mom that she doesn't know if she wants to be a hero anymore. After what she had to do today. However, her call is abruptly cut short. The vampires are coming. Dracula says, prepare yourself, girl. They've come. As Dracula is fighting vampires, a voice from the shadow says, you should have listened to your false lords. Dracula's warning. You should have hurried other places. I have to think you wanted me to find you. Who is this voice? Who is speaking to Brielle? This person hits her from behind and drives her to the floor. This person is none other than Blade, her father, and he is in full vampiric demon mode. Blade stands over her in rage. Next, Dracula, Blood Hunt, Volume 1, Issue 3.